Joining us at Post 9 to break it all down is Wells Fargo Securities Analyst Mike Mayo, covers the stocks. You know, Mike, I do wonder what will happen to this, this chorus of negative articles and negative press around the culture when, if David's right, the investment banking business comes back. And then the business as a whole, Goldman is very tied to that, performs better. Well, as it relates to Goldman Sachs, winning cures all. So right. if they get higher returns and profits and growth, then I think a lot of these cultural concerns will fade to the background. But there, there is an issue here. Goldman Sachs stock started today at $322 a share. That's equal to their tangible book value. They trade at one times tangible book value for a firm that's grown that book value by half over the last five years. So clearly there's some issues weighing on Goldman Sachs. One issue is the, the cultural issue. I think that's more for the press, though, than for the, the shareholders. That doesn't come up to me as much as it does in the narratives, uh, you know, in the, in the mainstream here. Um, then the other issue... Investors aren't concerned about it? You know, not as much as you would think. Like, when I talk to the, I talk to the largest institutional investors, I've been doing this since my fourth decade. It's my, by the way, it's my 25th year on CNBC. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, but, you know, they're more concerned about what's the capital market cycle going to do. And you heard David Solomon saying, hey, I think it's turning. We see green shoots. One IPO leads to another IPO. You're seeing the private equity market come back on board. So that's what people care the most about. But when I talk to them, then they want to know how Goldman's going to improve their returns from just 10 percent. That's not Goldman-esque. Closer to their target of around 15 percent. And yesterday on your interview on CNBC, you heard him say that asset and wealth management is going to be a big engine. And then they want to know about Goldman's efficiency. It was expense to revenue ratio was 68 percent last year. Their target's 60 percent, so they're certainly not there. Um, and then they do ask questions about the culture and these articles. And he did address some of that yesterday. He said, yes, they've lost 200 partners over, over his five years. That's half of the partners. But he's saying that's comparable to any other period, and you would need to make room at the top for new talent. So I thought he pretty much addressed the issues that were raised. Now, for me, I look at Goldman observing the cold, hard facts, and there's a lot of soft factors at work, and at some point it becomes a black box. So I certainly pay attention to everything that's talked about. I was looking at some of the questions you raised in February. You said, why was consumer allowed to lose so much money? To what degree does Solomon have the confidence of partners? How is morale since they're no longer in the fortune best companies to work for list? You think you've gotten answers to all those questions? Um, only partly. Uh, but again, when you're trading at one time tangible book, you're pricing in a lot of concerns. I think, as David Solomon said on your interview here on CBC yesterday, a consumer, uh, they retreated. I never thought that was a good idea from day one. The idea of leading with a savings account, that's not a sticky relationship. But it is better to cut your losses than to go on forever. I think they waited too long, and losing over $3 billion the last three years was too much. And I do think that that led to less compensation for a lot of the partners. I think that probably made them upset. So I a mean, negative flywheel in that respect. Absolutely. And so I can see if people are upset for being paid down because consumer didn't pan out as expected, well, who expected consumer to pan out you know, very well? And so uh, better to cut your losses, though. That is Goldman-esque. He brought that up in the interview yesterday, but he's still not off the hook for cutting his losses a little bit later than he should have. I do, I th I do think it's interesting, though, that there's so much scrutiny on it, given it's a small percentage of business, and given what's happening at Morgan Stanley. I mean, they have a Logan Roy-style three-way succession battle with the time ticking, and nobody writes about culture stories there and calls that out. Why, why? is it just because it's Goldman Sachs? You know, um, Morgan Stanley, James Gorman, the CEO, he was not held in high esteem a decade ago. And people said, I don't want to own that, that stock. The CEO is an ex-consultant, this and that. And he was rough around the edges. And he said, well, if you don't like it, don't work here, basically. He paid the employees and a lot of stock. See what I'm getting to? It kind of reminds you a little bit of David Solomon right now. I mean, he's, he's making the tough decisions. He combined five asset management units into one. He did pay people down last year. He is taking this 400-person partnership structure and putting a more corporate-like structure around the firm.